bless you. This is the day the Lord has made, and we again are rejoicing and glad therein. This is learn and live, our learn and live time that we spend time in the Word of God. The Scripture emphatically tells us to learn to do well. So as doing well was an automatic, we would need to learn. And then we find out in John 10 and 10, the thief cometh to steal, kill, and destroy, but he's come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. So our twofold study, our twofold purpose during this study time is to make sure that there's something that's palatable that you're learning, and then to live how God intended for us to live. These are the twofold purposes of this particular time of study. We've been in a series of study centered around uh, family business, family business, family business. And we get to close out uh, this particular session and coming up with some other innovative ways uh, to make sure that we take snippets of these teachings that, uh, that, that we're going to make available. So it's going to be more work on me, but it's going to be a greater blessing than you. Amen. Uh, and so that's what uh, it's all about in regards to this. I, I want to close this teaching out uh, from a particular angle that we pray that blesses you uh, tremendously like it blessed me uh, for God, be his spirit, uh, to uh, commune with me and me with him uh, in reference to this. Come with me to the writings of Luke's account of the gospel, chapter number 6. And we want to look at verses 48 through uh, verse number, uh, excuse me, 46 through verse number 49. Verses 46 through verse 49. Verses 46 through verses 49. Uh, this is uh, a pericope, a collection of scriptures that have been put together uh, to explain or express a particular thought that our Lord and Savior wanted to convey and communicate with us. And it, uh, it's off of the premise of being a wise builder or a foolish builder, a wise builder or a foolish builder. And you'll find these words written from the New International Version. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? As for everyone who comes to me and hears my words and put them into practice, I will show you what they are like. Okay, please pay attention. They are like a man building a house who dug down deep, laid the foundation on a rock, and when a flood came, the torrent struck, and the house struck that house, but could not shake it because of how well it was built. Verse 49 says, but the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment that the turn struck that house, it collapsed and its destruction was completed. And its destruction was completed. I want to spend time uh, talking built to last. I want to use as a topic of focus, built to last, built to to last. My brothers and sisters, I must first start off by saying uh, very emphatically and enthusiastically um, that uh, this is a blueprint for how to ensure and to secure success in life. I said this is a blueprint for how to ensure and secure success in life. I will say it one more time for my note takers. This is a way to ensure and secure success in life. We're coming to the close of another month, which for many of us, if not all of us, it's consisted of some victories and some challenges. And as we look back in an effort to move forward, here are a few questions I'd like to pose to you and I that I ask myself at the conclusion of every month. So I'm, I'm allowing you uh, to be a part of some of my personal practices uh, because I don't believe we're just here to be here. We're here on purpose, with a purpose, and for a purpose. And one of the most damnable things that could happen, you get to glory 
and hadn't fulfilled your purpose in earth. Because there are, there are, there are experiences that God has, has constructed in his divine plan for the life of his people. And I don't want to get to glory and realize that I could have experienced more glory on earth than I did, even though the glory of heaven is superior. Okay? So this really is for the believer, it's supposed to be a dress rehearsal. It's getting us ready to go up and to stay up. Are y'all hearing me? And so I, I, I wanted to start off, uh, we didn't come to play with you. We came to really work today, y'all. And so we're going to hit it quick. One of the questions that I ask myself as I review my mom to project what it is that I'm attempting to continue or to discontinue, am I in alignment with God's design and my desires? Has this mom that I've experienced, has this journey that I'm on, has it gotten me in alignment with God, how he designed life for me and everyone else, and or my desires. Now, there are some desires that I have uh, that are not necessarily God's desires for me. Well, the devil don't have an issue with that. But the desires that God has put in my heart for the desire, for the design that he has for me, that's what the devil has an issue with. So God wants me to live the blessed life. Now, what kind of car I drive, I don't think God tripping off of that. That's my personal preference. Okay, are you with me? But to have a vehicle that is quality and quantitatively capable of getting me to every place I need to be gotten to to do the work that I'm supposed to be able to do uh, for the kingdom. I can remember uh, my parents uh, helped me and my dad did something um, that at the time I thought was uh, very challenging because he's always been um, a protector of his credit. And I didn't start off with bad credit. I started off with no credit. And so there was a position and a situation that I found myself in uh, that, um, that, um, that I was applying for a car and I needed a cosigner. And my dad's statement was to me was, son, do you know how to send up timber? And I said, man, you raised me. You know I don't know nothing about chopping no wood, cutting no trees, or anything like that. But it was a metaphor to say, do you know how to pray? Because what I'm teaching you how to do is develop a credible name for yourself because I've been the credible name for you all these previous years of your life. Okay? Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? Um, And... Until then, what I was driving is a 1979 Buick Regal that they passed on to my brother and I. Well, this Regal didn't have no air. Okay, amen. I mean, it had heat. So during the cold months, we were good. And I think that that's a contributing factor to why I drive so fast. I I hadn't, because now we needed the wind uh, to serve uh, as an assistant in this area. Okay? Well, I got called in the ministry. I got called in the ministry, and I was getting a lot of opportunities to go and preach. A lot of opportunity as a young preacher, as a youth preacher, to go and preach. And the cops started acting up. Cops started acting up on me all the time. And, and, and I said to the Lord, I said, hey, you called me. I didn't, I didn't ask for this assignment. And, and now I need some assistance in having reliable transportation to be able to get me from place to place. Okay, this is me getting an alignment for my assignment. Okay, and and, and my desire, I wasn't picking. I needed some reliable. See, some folks wanna uh, go from a hoopty uh, to uh, a luxury vehicle. And they might not have a luxury vehicle mindset or the ability to maintain it. Okay? See, it's a difference between changing the oil in a Camry and changing the oil in a Mercedes or a Bentley. Okay? No, you, you, you're looking at some hundreds of dollar differences. Okay? 
So in some cases, it's not whether you can get it, it's whether you can maintain it. Can you deal with the upkeep? Come on, work with me, y'all. And, and, so, and, so, and so what ended up happening, my mentor uh, says that, you know, if, if, if God did it for a, a, a family member of mine, God can do it for you. Well, it's interesting enough that one of the areas that I get to frequently serve now is the eastern side of the city. It used to be a place called Bruno Automotive Sale on the Center Point Parkway. And so one day I'd gone out looking and I found a car that I fit, felt like fit me, uh, a 1989 Nissan Sentra. Called my mother and said, Mama, they, they're willing to work with me uh, with no credit. They want an $800 down payment. And uh, uh, Mama says, uh, I'll be there to get you. Well, she picked me up from work, and we were riding, and the song that was playing over the radio at that time, because Mama kept it on the gospel radio station, W-A-G-G. And, and the song that was playing was Rance Allen and the Allen Singers. He's a miracle worker. And y'all, it went from being a song to being my life story because I was able, watch this, to give them $400 and to write a post-dated check for $400 and leave off of the grounds uh, with a promise of getting insurance. What am I telling you? When you get in alignment to what God has designed for your life, you'll fulfill what he desires for you, and then your desires will begin to line up because anything that leads to godliness and life, so if it's going to demonstrate godly attributes, godliness, godly attributes, and it's going to deal with life as God intended, then you got access to it. Can somebody put in the chat, say in the house, I got access to everything that God promised. No, no, I need a believer to get behind that. I have access to everything that God promised. And, and so what, what, what I'm saying and what I'm suggesting uh, to us from the very onset of this particular teaching, it, it, basically what I'm saying when I ask that question, am I in alignment? But what God designed and what I desire, okay? So he designed me to be his ambassador in the earth. He designed you to be his ambassador in the earth. And so you have to be clear on where you're supposed to be ambassadors, okay? All of us are not in all sectors of society, but we do have some sectors or a sector of society that we are supposed to be a contributor in. Are you with me? Okay, so, so, so meaning, am I experiencing the quality of life as God intended? That's being in alignment. I'm experiencing the quality of life as God has intended. And watch this. When I'm talking about desire, this is what I wish, what, 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 what I want. Are my wishes honorable to kingdom advancement? Okay? So, so am I living the kind of life as God intended? Okay? That's, that's a life of abundance. That's a life of extraordinary living. That's a life of more than enough. Okay? Okay? Are you with me? And this is spiritual and natural, okay? See, on one side, the world focused on the natural. On God's side, he said, you can have the best of both worlds. Ah, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his right way of doing things and everything that the world has to offer, I'll, I'll, it's, it, it's already in my package. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. It's in my benefit package for you. Right. But you've got you to seek the godly way of doing things, okay? Not only is it a right way and a wrong way to love somebody, it's a right way and a wrong way to live. Uh, are y'all with me? Huh? Can y'all handle a little bit more? You want it? Here, go. And so what I'm saying, can you use, can, can, can he use what I want to draw others to him? So if this is my desire, 
Can God use that desire that I have to draw others to him? Have you, ever, have you ever experienced and seen somebody that you admired, you looked up to, and you, you said, I want something similar to that? In my relationship, uh, in my resources, uh, in the way I present and, and what I do, I want, I want to I be comparable to that. I'm not competing. I'm not comparing myself to them, but they are a model for me to look up to. Huh? Somebody that was in the church that, 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 could, that you perceived as an effective and efficient prayer, that they could pray, that they could sing, that they could read the scripture, uh, uh, that they had an ideal family life and, and, and things of that nature. And you say, I want something like that. Well, if you want something like that, you want who made it possible for them to have it. But then the second question I ask myself if not, what do I need to modify or to remove that no longer best serves me in this season of my life? That's my second question. So if, I, if I'm getting in alignment, and that's, the, that's God created me on purpose, with purpose, and for purpose. I'm getting in alignment with that. And then my desires, you know, that, 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 that reflect godly traits Okay. distinguishes me from others and, and, and allows me to live life as he intended. If nothing about my life lines up with that, what do I need to modify or what do I need to remove? Because in this particular season of my life, this ain't helping me. Okay. So what I'm suggesting to you that if we do regular assessments, we usually don't deal with long-term agony. I'll say it again. If you do regular assessments, you usually don't deal with long-term agony because you're living your life in a way that you're doing assessments. I, 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 one, of, one of the most disheartening things for me to be around people that say they want better but hadn't did any type of, of analysis to see what could hold them up from getting better. Yeah. What are you doing? La, 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 pie in the sky, you know, just <laughs> as the days go by, you know, young and the restless, what you going to do if you restless? Okay. Are we good? So as it relates to the usage of my time, concerning my spiritual, my personal, and my professional development, okay? Because everything affects everything else. Everything is interrelated. See, you can love the Lord and be real spiritual, but if you don't, if you don't take care of your temple, your health is affecting your spirituality, okay? Your, your, your emotions are affecting your spirituality, Okay, are y'all with me? Your relationships are affecting your spirituality. Come on, y'all. If, 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 if my wife and I weren't consistently working on being better individuals, a better couple, if she made living at home difficult, y'all gonna get the overflow of that in, in, in some form, okay? Now, am I going to preach and teach what? But you're not getting my best presentation because there's a part of me, a major part of me, that's off balance. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? So when y'all say, you know, uh, you just turn it off when you go to work, your job not getting the best of you. Not if other areas of your life is jacked up. Come on, y'all. You don't turn off your pain. You working with the pain while you're at work. <laughs> but the pain is still, come on here. Can we talk for real up in here? Huh? Huh? It's still here. All right. So, 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 so not only that, you all, my third question is simply this. So first of all, I've got to, I've got to, 
ask myself, am I in alignment with what he's designed? And does my desires line up? Second question, what do I need to modify and remove? That could be adversely affecting me in this season of my life. Then my last question that I ask myself, am I optimizing and maximizing what God has trusted me with so that he can multiply my influence and my impact in this season of my life? See, when you say he's Lord, remember the text told off, he said they call him Lord, Kiros, master, teacher, leader, Okay. So when I say he's Lord, that means he has the right to lead me in every area of my life. He wants to be Lord of all or not Lord at all. Okay? And, and one of the fragmented ways that I've seen us present, okay, Lord, you can have me here, but you can't have me there. That's, that's what we call uh, hypocritical or uh, spiritually bipolarism. Are, are y'all with me? I mean, imagine not knowing what you're going to get from a person on a regular basis. <laughs> okay, uh, so, the, so, so my third question, my third question, okay, all right, we need to put it on the screen. My third question, am I optimizing and maximizing what God has trusted me with? so that he can multiply my influence and my impact yeah. in the season that I'm in. Season of my life. Because life uh, happens in seasons. Okay? All right? We're going to deal with that eventually. You see, God wants to influence and impact culture through using your life, my life, and our experience. Yeah. That's what we're here for, you all, yeah. is to be his vehicle. His vehicle. Uh, the Bible, his image and his likeness, his Imago Dei, his image bearer. Yeah. So when people see you, they should see a resemblance of God. Come on. So is it in the natural? So is it also in the spirit? My parents are here. You can look at them and, and see me. Okay? Or look at me and see them. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? You know, several of my aunties and all the family members, you can tell we can folks. <laughs> so is it that, that way in the natural? It's supposed to be that way in the spiritual. You're a part of this family. We can, folks. And so spiritually, people ought to be able to see you and know who your kin is. <laughs> Are y'all all right? Huh? So, so, so if influence and impact is going to be achieved in the earth, achieved in the world in which we live, he told us to be salt and light. Are, are y'all with me? We are to be flavor and illumination. That there ought to be some distinctive taste yeah. that happens when they experience what we offer. Yeah, right. And then remember, it don't take a lot of salt. Now, some of y'all, that's what you need help in. Uh, uh, it don't take a lot of salt to add flavor. Right. Okay, are y'all with me? <laughs> Here it is, you all. Let, let's, let's get to the crust of this, because when, when I saw this text, because there are two things that, that happens because we're living in this new dispensation. You got the old dispensation and the new dispensation. Old Testament, New Testament. So my assignment is always to show you what was said and what was done then. And secondly, how does it apply to you and I now? Okay. So how, how is the most consequential book that's ever been written, compiled, as effective now as it was when the writers were putting it together. For the different writers over 150 years, 150, 1,500 years. 
compiled this information that we call the Bible, okay? And it's still as impactful now as it was compiled then. Are y'all hearing me? A book that is my roadmap for life. So if I'm going to live my best life, I've got to follow the roadmap that the scripture gives me. Are y'all here? Okay. So if God is the architect of the world, watch y'all, you and I are the builders of the world. I mean, when you go back and you peruse, you peruse the, the sacred passages of the Old Testament and you look at Genesis, he, he, he architect the world. He, he drew the world off of the corridors of his mind and uh, the fluency of his words. He used his mind and his mouth to make a masterpiece called the world. Teach, boy! His mind and his mouth. He thought it, and then he trailblazed it with his words. Carved out every valley and hewed out every mountain with words. And then he made us, and James Weldon Johnson, he created the world, you know. Uh, and God said, <laughs> okay, all right. And, 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 and so, uh, and y'all, now you really want to get daddy, uh, y'all ought to get daddy to go one of these sessions y'all have in, in your class to, to do, to do James Weldon Johnson, uh, the creation. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. You got too much. You got to give it all out, man. Amen. Uh, we, we were having family time together, y'all and him, and I was just talking, and that joker went, excuse me, daddy went off in that lane. I was like, whoa, come on, dude. The fluency of his voice and the, the consistency of his work. And you're talking about some, well, I'm, I'm 54, and he my senior by some decades. And yet, it was like, he was back in that classroom all over again, quoting, quoting, quoting James Weldon Johnson's uh, rendition of the creation, okay? So, so we're builders. Watch this. Listen to me good. So God comes up with the design and the material. Because if we're in partnership with them, there's a part that he does, and there's a part that you and I are supposed to do, okay? So what did he do? He created, Okay? And then he gave the raw material that was necessary to cause what he started to continue. Are y'all with me? So when we partner with God, we become co-creators. He created, and now we co-create what he already. Are y'all listening? Okay, now, now watch this, you all. Watch this, watch this. So... We are then responsible for as builders, in some seasons we use raw material. We take it in a form that it has not been transformed into what it's going to be. Okay? See, cabins that we see that are built then start off being cabins. The raw material was wood that they chopped the trees down and they carved them and they shaped them and they began to form them to, to fit a particular image. And when it was finished, we called it a house or a cab. Okay, or a shack, whatever you want to work with. You know, are, are y'all with me? But that's not how it started off. It took somebody to be creative enough to be able to take something that looked one way yeah. and transform it yeah. into something else. Yeah. Ah! Okay, are y'all understanding? And, and so this is what our assignment, so in some seasons, we are to be builders that take it in its raw form. And in other seasons, watch this, we are not necessarily taking it in its raw form to do what needs to be done. Watch this. In other seasons, we are performing renovation and enhancement. Okay? To what already exists. 
okay? See, renovation can sometimes be just as uh, messy as demolition. Okay? See, when, when I'm renovating something, I'm saying nothing's wrong with what it, what's already in existence. I just want to add a different look. Okay? Uh, <laughs> yeah, she like adding a lot of different looks. Yeah, a- amen. Mama is the master of renovation and enhancement. (laughs) You know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. (laughs) Renovation and enhancement, okay? So everything doesn't always need to be built. Some things need to be renovated and enhanced. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? Huh? Can we work a little harder? We're there. This is where our text of the day tells us that there are two types of builders. There are those that are wise, and then there are those that are foolish. This is what our text gives us as Jesus is teaching, and he's speaking in a storytelling form called parables. And he says, let, 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 me, let me help you out. You're, you're calling me Lord, okay? And you don't do anything that I say. Let, let me show you the distinctive difference between those that call me that and allow me to be that in their lives versus those that call me that and don't allow me to be that in their life. In other words, he says, y'all, this is the punchline. The results that we get will be determined by the instructions that we follow. We can go home. Good day, y'all. I I, I say the results that we get will be determined by the instructions that we follow. So what he said is no way you can follow my instructions and not get my results. And so lip service is not enough. Your life has to be the service that lines up with your lips. Oh, are we good? Let's go home, y'all. I don't know the preacher trying to jump on me, and I'm trying to be good. Okay, so, 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 there, so he says, who, who, who hears my words, my expressed thoughts, uh, who hears my words, who hearkens to my words, okay? Watch this. He says, not only do you must we be hearers, we got to be practicers. We've got to execute. Got to exercise what we've been hearing. Come on. Listen, y'all, this, this, this is where it gets interesting because most of us, if we be honest, We've been good at hearing and inconsistent in practice. So my mentor says it this way. He says, God is enough for Sundays or not. So the devil don't have no problem with you coming to church, to the church house. He got some, a problem with you practicing what you get from here. Because he can't do nothing with you. Okay? What would have happened if Adam and Eve didn't listen too long? Conversation and the consistency of conversations can be an asset or a liability to your destination. Okay? I said conversations and consistent conversations can be an asset or a detriment to your destination. Now, y'all, y'all looking up there, all of, all of what you get is never on these screens. Okay? So you got to be listening and writing, okay? I, I need some professional note takers up in here. All right? Did you catch that? You better go back and listen if somebody didn't write it. Because some of this is fresh off the press. Amen. <laughs> okay? So, so, so he says, watch. First thing I got to do, I got to hear. Faith comes by hearing what? So when I say I'm in faith, 
It means I've heard what God has said. I've caught what he's intended. And now I'm implementing what he said. You got to implement this. Okay, now watch this. He says, I'm going to show you what they're like. Got my dad over there sweat. Oh, one. Look, look, look at the parallel, you all. Look at the parallel. I don't want you to miss this. Look at the parallel. Okay. The parallel is this. He gives us two definitive descriptions. He says, the one that is wise, look. As for everyone who comes to me, hears my words and puts them into practice, I'll show you what they're like. Verse 48 says, they're like a man building a what? Okay. And so now some of y'all got turned off right there. You said, Bishop, I'm not a builder. I didn't build a house. But now, metaphorically speaking, that word house is used as family. But I want to give you a more broader understanding. Whatever you're building, you can build it better if you got better with words. I said, whatever you're building, you can build it better if you got better with words. And watch this, if you get better with God's word. See, it's one thing to know, one thing to be able to speak good. There's another thing to be speaking good about the right somebody. Are y'all understanding? Okay, no, 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 no. So he says, build a house. Watch this. What does he do? He dug down deep and laid a foundation on a rock. Okay, all right, listen, listen to me. That word foundation, okay, stabilizing force, standardizing force, okay. He says, a foundation on a rock. Rock is... Uh, an adamant object, okay, uh, a mountain, a boulder, something that stabilizes and keeps things in place. So he says, watch. Now, I don't want you to miss it. Can I parenthetically throw Matthew in here? Go on Matthew 16, and Jesus says, upon this rock, I build my church, I build my ecclesia, the ones that I've called out so that I can call on. And the very gates of hell shall not prevail against them. Okay, why? he says, upon this revelation knowledge that you have, I'm going to build, I'm going to set as the foundation of my church. Thou art the Christ, the Son. He says, so I'm the foundation. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is, I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy, lean on. He says, I'm the foundation. Uh, and in other words, anything that you're building, we're going to look at it in a minute, needs a foundation. Okay, now watch what he says. He says, if the foundation is solid, you go through what other people go through, but you don't look like you've been through it. Did y'all catch that? No, no. He says, you're not immune from trouble. Watch this. You just fortified to be able to withstand when trouble comes. Come here. Listen, when a flood came and the torrent struck, that house, don't, don't leave, that house, but could not shake it because it was well built, okay? And in other words, in other words, it had a solid foundation. See, see, see houses, come on, and some of you all know, houses that are built right don't shift easy. And so when houses start shifting, it means that they're structural, that they're structural damage. It means that, watch this, the damage that you see in is not where it really uh, comes from. That's the reason he said they dug deep. Yeah. And, and, and so now, watch. In other words, what I'm suggesting to you, wise builders have deep foundations. So when stuff happens, they're not shaken easily. Okay? So now this, your word regiment becomes your world regiment. 
I'll say it again for my note text. Your word regiment becomes your world regiment. How your world is shaped is based off of the words that relate. I say how your world is shaped is based off of the words that relate. God took words to form a world that did not exist. And whatever is existing in your life and my life, check your words. Uh, uh, does your words, homo legio, line up? He similar speaking. Does it line up with what God said? Are we good? Let, let, let's go home. And I'll give you, give you these notes, these takeaways. Look at verse 49, you all. But then the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. So it has no stability. One is stable, one is unstable. One is sure, one is insecure. Unsure, okay? One is built right, one is built wrong. Listen, so it looked good on the outside, but because the inside wasn't right, when the same set of circumstances happen, it collapsed. That's what the scripture said, and the destruction was complete. Why? It didn't have nothing to hold on to. And y'all, I, 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 if you missed everything else, get this. You better make sure your anchor is sure. And somebody said, hold to the solid rock. And then they clarified, oh, Jesus, let me get out. Of they clarified who the rock was. It's not your bank account. It's not the square footage of your house. It's not your hips, lips, and fingertips. No, no, no. That, that's not the solid rock. They clarified who the solid rock is. They said, it's Jesus. Is there any help in here and on the line? Is your solid rock Jesus? And that's the reason Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. Let me get out of here, y'all. Let's listen. So, so, so he says, he says, he says, it fell apart. And y'all for 23 years and now for uh, 70 some plus years, because over the history of this ministry, it's been some rock building experiences. Because storms have come. The winds have blown. We, we, but, 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 but somebody said, we still here. Yeah. Come on. It, can you make it personal and say, I'm still here? Yeah. I've had some storms. I've had some trouble. I've had some trials. I've had some difficulties. And I don't look like what I've been through. But can I, can I, can I, can I bring it home and be even more transparent? Because what I want you to see is what, when it's under construction, what it looks like, okay? When, when that foundation has been laid. And now watch this. You can't see the foundation because it's covered up. But it can stand up under the weight. Are y'all catching this? And in other words, what, what, what Jane messed around, what Peter messed around and wrote, sit down, auntie, what Peter messed around and wrote, he told us to cast all. Because he's the foundation. He can handle the weight of your cares, the weight of your troubles, the weight of your trials, the weight of your disappointment, the weight of your heartbreak, the weight of your breakdowns, because eventually there's going to be a breakthrough. And sometimes there has to be a break up before there can be a breakthrough. But, but can I give you this in closing, y'all? <laughs> can I give you this? Y'all want it? Y'all will give me five more minutes. Okay, they, they don't want it, y'all. Uh, 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 okay, now, 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 now. So it's to take the material. Take what you got to work with. My mentor says it this way. He says that excellence is a commitment to do the best that you can 
in the season that you're in with the resources you had to work with. Come on, y'all. We come from a long heritage and history of folks that did the best that they could in the season that they were in with the resources they had to work with. Folks took leftover and made leftovers look like some brand new. Woo! So, 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 so the first thing, the first thing that, 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 that you've got to get, and i got to get out of here, y'all, uh, the first thing that you got to get, somebody say, your foundation. If, if, if whatever relationship, if whatever you're building, if whatever you're working on, uh, you got to make sure it's built on the right foundation. What's the foundation of your relationship? Was it built on lies and deception? Come on. Did you get the real them or their representative? Huh? No, 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 no. Come on, y'all. That's the reason uh, it's just better to be you. Somebody say foundation. When, when I'm talking foundation, it serves as the standard by which everything else is built from. Okay, I'll say it again for my note takers. It serves as the standard by which everything else is built from. Okay, it serves as the standard. Okay, by which everything else is built from. So, 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 so what we are standing on is really not the foundation. The foundation is on the ground. And, 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 when, and, and when they did an appraisal of the facility, uh, they valued this ground that we're standing on in the millions. Why? Because they said they don't build them like this no more. Come on, y'all. Listen, and because it's not as updated as I want it to be in its appearance on the outside, but then when the man came and said that, I was like, whoa. What, what you're saying, that it was built right a long time ago. And when it's built right from the beginning, it'll still be standing in the end. And so, well, li listen, you've seen uh, tornadoes and, and terrible things happen in communities, and it's like some houses make it through it, and some houses collapse going through it, okay? Go check with the builder. And if you allow the builder of your soul, the giver of life, the preserver of every good and perfect gift to navigate you through whatever season you're in, I'm telling you, you're going to come out looking good even though you went through a season where it was looking bad. Yeah. Somebody say foundation. foundation. But, but, but not only must they have a foundation, but then, y'all, the, the picture that I showed you, it, it reflects the foundation, but then the second thing it reflects, it reflects the framework. See, the framework is what you see, okay? Uh, it deals with uh, well, the square footage and, and the diameters that, that make your kitchen your kitchen and your living room your living room and your dining room your dining L Listen, in, in other words, uh, everything is sectored off. It's the framework, how everything that exists based off of what is built, the foundation, this is how it's supposed to look. Framework. When I'm talking framework, I'm saying it's what gives structure to what is being built. Okay? It gives structure to what's being built. So now you'll have them to come and mark off. Get a blueprint. Okay? Of, of, of how everything is supposed to be laid and put. Okay? So it goes from the foundation, this good ground. Okay? What you're seeing, we went deeper. Okay? 
And so when you look at God's word, you'll, you, you, you'll start understanding that it's deeper than it appears. So I got to trust him because he's deep, y'all. He sees what I don't see. He knows what I don't know. He's been where I'm on my way to. He, he, he can handle it. I got to get out of here. I've held you too long. Uh, the framework. So the foundation, check one. What, what's the foundation of this relationship? Are, are both of us after glorifying God? Uh, uh, are, are you coming here uh, because you believe that this is a house where w the word of God is, is taught and applied? Are you with me? Uh, uh, and these are the pillars of what we do. We focus on faith, family, fitness, uh, faculties, finances, and facilities. Those are our pillars. Those are the six pillars of the Zion Ministries. This is what we focus on. We want to be a faith building uh, institute right. to where uh, the teaching of scripture, et cetera, and, and, and then the application of what you've been taught and your lives get better. We want to build strong families because we believe that he takes the family to build the church to expand his kingdom. Right. We want to make sure you're holistically fit. Right. We don't want you just to look good. We want you to live good. Okay. And then we want you to be ambassadors on your faculties, your, your careers, your vocations, your businesses. We, we want you to be the standard that others look to. Okay. Then we want your finances to be in order because we understand that we are stewards of everything that he trusted us with. Okay. See, see he's the architect, but we are the stewards of, of, of what is built, okay, and, and, and how it's developed. Are y'all with me? But, but, but then our facilities are supposed to be immaculate and spectacular. Uh, city on a hill that can't be hidden, okay? So uh, city hall just shouldn't be light up, lit, lit up at certain times of the year. God's houses should be lit up all the time. Are y'all with me? So, so I got to have a foundation. Secondly, I need framework, okay? What are we building? What are we working on building together, okay? These are some of the discussions that we have to have in our relationships, okay? Are you with me? Because if I could go old school, uh, just for a minute, and, and, and it's not old enough for some of y'all, and it's too uh, uh, old for some of the rest of you. Uh, one great uh, producer, writer, singer says, uh, I'm good all by myself, but I'm a force when we're together. You make me better. Okay? All right. All right. Yeah, I told you. Uh, 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 okay? All right. Uh, well, let me go Luther. That might help some of you. Uh, you know, you tell the house is not a home. Okay? Unless you there, you know, okay? Uh, are y'all with me? But, but then you are thirdly, come on, come back. Get back in the spirit. Get back in the spirit. So I've got to get my foundation. What are we building off of? What are you bringing to the table? What am I bringing to the table? That's our foundation. My framework, now what are we going to build together? Okay. This is the frame. This is the picture. This is the portrait. This is the outlook of what we're building together. Okay. But then we need a filter, y'all. Somebody say filter. Filter exposes and removes what can be detrimental to what is being built. What are your, some of your non-negotiables? What, what is your filter? I'll say it again. A filter exposes and removes what can be detrimental to what is being built. A filter exposes and removes what can be detrimental to what's being built. Are we good? Y'all got it? Huh? Because 
A lot of us get in trouble because we don't have filters. We, we, we don't have uh, balance and boundaries. We don't have things in place to help make sure that what don't need to continue to be with us goes any far. We need some filters, okay? This is where I'm heading. And it don't mean that they, they're a bad person. It just means they can't go no farther with you. Are we good? Lastly is this. Thank you, Pastor e. it, it, It's fruition. Somebody say fruition. What, what's, what does the finished product, once everything is done, look like? Fruition. Fruition is the finished product once everything is done. Like when the results have come. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the finished product of the house that we showed you early, what it looks like after everything has been done. The house that we showed you earlier, once uh, it is done, yeah. this is what it looks like. Fruit. It's the fruition. Yeah. Yeah. It's the fruit. Yeah. Thank you. It's, it's, it's what it looks like on the screens, y'all. There we go. But when it started, that ain't how it looked. The foundation had to be laid. Okay? The framework had to be put in place. Some filters so that if something came against it, it could be exposed and removed because nobody don't want to have to pay twice for what could have been built right once. Are y'all good? L listen, listen. Y'all, this is a statement I've been saying to you, and I hope you catch it. You have to see it twice in order to do it once. They saw it before they saw it. And we have to see it before we see it. Okay, are y'all here? And lastly, y'all, can I be transparent right here? I've been both types of builders. I've been the wise one that took godly information, knowledge, and understanding and applied it at the right time, and I've been the foolish one. I didn't adhere to his instruction and his information because a fool says in his heart, there is no God. I acted like God wasn't even talking to me. I don't know if you can be that honest. And I didn't adhere to his counsel and, and his advice and, and, and information. And, 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 and guess what? I found out through experience where some of us can get through education. And allow me to mentor you in this process so that you don't have to see mentors expedite progress. Right. It prevents you from having to go through some stuff. Right. Experience is a good teacher, but it don't always have to be the necessary one. Yes, if, if you can extend, well, in some cases, because some stuff you need to go through, but, but, but not in all cases. Because sometimes the information that you got and got the proof of can help me get ahead faster without me having to go through what you went through in order to get it. Are y'all with me? And so what I'm closing by simply saying, choose to be a wise builder. Build your life, build your legacy, build your relationships off of the most reliable source of information by which we can live our lives. That's the word of God. This is my time. Hopefully this has been inspiring and helpful to you. God loves you. I love you also. Thank you. We are grateful for the impactful message we received today and would like to take this opportunity to invite you to further connect with us. We offer three ways to foster that connection. Firstly, if you are interested in cultivating a personal relationship with God, we welcome you to do so. Secondly, if you feel the need to rejuvenate and be restored in God, we extend the invitation to you. 
And finally, if you desire to engage with a caring community that loves God and people, we encourage you to connect with our ministry. We understand that giving is an act of worship that is deeply personal between you and God. We believe that God empowers us to steward our resources wisely and multiply them. You can contribute through various platforms such as Cash App, Giveify, or Mail-in Seeds. Please note that Bishop has his separate and personal links for Cash App and Giveify. We express our gratitude for every seed sown and have faith that God will bless the givers abundantly in return.